Description of his manners, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His companion's respect for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu said, There was none dearer to me than the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And none was more sublime in my eyes than he. Never could I pluck courage to catch a full glimpse of his face due to its splendor. So if I am asked to describe his features, I cannot do that, for I have never eyed him fully. And Arwa ibn Mas'ud said, when describing him to the Quraysh on the day of Hudaybiyyah, he said, By Allah, I have never seen any king respected by his courtiers as much as Muhammad is respected by his companions. By Allah, if he spat, the spittle would fall into the hands of one of them, meaning one of his companions, who would rub it on his face and his skin. If he ordered them, they would carry out his order immediately. If he performed ablution, they would struggle to take the remaining water. And when he spoke, they would lower their voices and would not look at his face constantly out of respect. His manners with Allah. Abdullah ibn al-Shakir said, And we said, You are our Lord, Sayyid. To this he replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Lord is Allah, the Blessed and Exalted Then we said You are most endowed with excellence and superiority from amongst us To this he replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Say what you have to say Or part of what you have to say Do not let the devil get you carried away His courage Ali ibn Abi Talib and said when the fighting intensified and the two sides met in battle, we sought shelter with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and none was closer to the enemy than him. His fear of Allah The Prophet وسلم, said, By Allah, I am more submissive to Allah and more afraid of him than you. Goodness to his family the Prophet ﷺ said, The best of you is the one who is best to his wife, and I am the best of you to my wives. His shyness. Abu Sa'id said, The Prophet ﷺ had more modesty than a virgin in her tent. When he saw something he disliked, we noticed it in his face. Chose the easiest option. Aisha ﷺ said, when the Prophet ﷺ was given an option between two things, he used to select the easier of the two as long as it was not sinful. But if it was sinful, he would remain far from it. Never took revenge for himself. Aisha anha said, By Allah, he never took revenge for himself concerning any matter that was presented to him. But when Allah's limits were transgressed, he would take revenge for Allah's sake. Never faulted food. Aisha anha said the Messenger of Allah وسلم, never expressed disapproval of food. If he desired it, he ate it. And if he disliked it, he left it alone. He accepted gifts. Aisha anha narrated the Prophet وسلم, would accept gifts and he would give something in return. Never accepted sadaqah. The Prophet وسلم, said the family of Muhammad وسلم, does not eat from sadaqah. His humility. Uqba ibn Amir an said, A man came to the Prophet وسلم, and his voice trembled out of awe as he spoke to him. The Prophet وسلم, said to him, Be calm, for I am not a king. Verily, I am only the son of a woman who ate dried meat. Served his family, narrated by Al-Aswad an. He said, I asked Aisha anha, what did the Prophet ﷺ used to do at home? She replied, he used to keep himself busy serving his family. And when it was time for prayer, he would get up for prayer. He did not pay mind to the ignorant. Allah's Messenger ﷺ said, Does it not astonish you how Allah protects me from the Quraysh's abusing and cursing? They abuse Muhammadan and curse Muhammadan whilst I am Muhammad and not Muhammadan. His truthfulness. 
narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the truthful and truly inspired As-Sadiq al-Musduq said, his manners with those who served him. Anas bin Malik radiallahu narrated, I served Allah's Messenger for 10 years and he never said uff, an expression of disapproval, to me ever. He never said, why did you do that for something I had done? Nor did he say, why did you not do such and such for something I had not done? He never stood out amongst his companions. Anas bin Malik said, while we were sitting in the masjid, a man came on a camel and made it kneel in the masjid. Then he tied it and he said to them, which one of you is Muhammad? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reclining amongst his companions and we said, this white man who is reclining. The man said, O son of Abdul Muttalib. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have answered you. The man said, O Muhammad, I'm going to ask you questions and I will be harsh in asking. Do not get upset. The man said, I adjure you by your Lord and the Lord of those who came before you. Has Allah sent you to all the people? The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, By Allah, yes. He said, I adjure you by Allah. Has Allah commanded you to offer five prayers each day and night? The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, By Allah, yes. He said, I adjure you by Allah. Has Allah commanded you to fast this month each year? The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, By Allah, yes. He said, I adjure you by Allah, has Allah commanded you to take this charity from our rich and distribute it amongst our poor? The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, by Allah, yes. The man said, I believe in that which you have bought, and I am the envoy of my people who are coming after me. I am Dimam ibn Tha'laba, the brother of Banu Sa'ad ibn Bakr. His bread, Aisha radiallahu anha reported, the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not fill their bellies from bread made out of barley for two successive days until Allah's Messenger وسلم, died. His abstinence from the worldly life. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, I would not like to have gold equal to this Mount of Uhud unless nothing of it, not even a single dinar of it, remains with me for less than three days. Except something that I would keep for repaying debts. I would have spent it all amongst Allah's slaves like this, and like this, and like this. Never cursed. Aisha radiallahu anha said, it was not the nature of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to talk indecently, nor did he engage himself in the use of obscene language, nor did he shout and talk in the bazaars, which is against dignity. He did not avenge a bad deed with a bad one, but forgave it, and thereafter did not even mention it. Never touched a woman's hand he wasn't married to. Aisha radiallahu anha said, his palm, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never touched the palm of a woman. How he lived, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anha said, I entered upon the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was sitting on a reed mat, I sat down and saw that he was wearing a waist wrap and there was no other barrier between him and the mat but his waist wrap and the reed mat had made marks on his side and I saw a handful of barley nearly a sa' in the corner of the room and a skin hanging up. My eyes flowed with tears and he said, why are you weeping, O son of Khattab? I said, O Prophet of Allah, why should I not weep? This mat has made marks on your side, and this is all you have accumulated. I cannot see anything other than what I see. Whilst the emperors and the Caesars live amongst fruits and rivers, you are the Prophet of Allah, and this is all what you have accumulated? He said, O son of Khattab, does it not please you to know that these things are for us in the hereafter and for them in the world? He said, yes. <laughs>